welcome back to my pit lane garage. Today we have my 1994 325 IS in the garage here. We're gonna do some work to this thing. I am actually signed up for an HPDE event with the NASA Racing Club in a week or so. So I have a lot of stuff I gotta get done on the car, primarily the new StopTech brake rotors and Hawk DTC 60 brake pads that I bought a little while back. If you missed that video, go back and check it out to see what we'll be putting on. We're gonna be heading to Pueblo Motorsports Park down in Pueblo, Colorado, so it should be fun. We're gonna get the car up on the quick jack and get this thing started. All right, we got the car up in the air in no time flat, thanks to the quick jack. So we're gonna start getting the tires off, then start working on taking the front brakes apart and then the back brakes apart. We'll show you guys what we're doing and give you an idea of how it's done. All right, wheels are off. Let's see what we've got going on under here. So we have our crusty old stock rotor. We're gonna change that out with the stop tech rotor. The pads in there are actually Ferrodo DS2500, so not too terrible of a pad, but not very efficient for doing track work. So we'll change those out for the Hawk DTC 60s. And we've got some nice cobwebs growing up in here. A little bit of dirt and bugs. So we might try to clean this stuff off a little bit while we're under there, but I'm not too worried about it. Eventually I need to send those shocks in for a rebuild and inspection anyways. And we'll take a look at the new stuff that we'll be installing here. Again, our StopTech slotted rotor and the big Hawk DTC 60 brake pads. All right, so getting the brakes removed on the E36 BMW is a little bit more tricky than my BRZ or my FRS was. It's a 23 year old car, obviously things are a little bit different, but starting off, we gotta get the caliper back off and that requires taking off this little clip on the front here, which you can use a screwdriver to kind of pry it out, and get it out of the holes in the caliper and it'll just kind of twist on out of there. It takes a little bit of finagling, but not terribly difficult. And then on the back of the caliper there is a couple little rubber boots that have these rubber caps in them. You have to pull those caps off, grab a hex wrench, and you can use that to start taking out the bolts behind the caliper here. Here's what the bolt looks like. There's one on the top behind the caliper and then one down below as well. We'll get both of those out. Second bolt is out from the bottom of the caliper and just a quick correction, the Allen key that you use is actually a seven millimeter. You'll use a six millimeter for this bolt that holds the rotor in, which we'll get to in just a minute here. Once you have the two bolts out from the back of the caliper, the caliper will slide out backwards. So we kind of just got to Finagle it, wiggle it out of there. Now on one side of the car, maybe both of them, you're gonna have a brake pad sensor that's stuck down in here on the brake pad itself. You wanna make sure you pop that out with a screwdriver if it is there. Mine is on the other side of the car. Once the caliper's out, our brake pads fall out. This one in the back is actually clamped into the piston. So you can grab the edges, pop it out. You'll see it's got the little feet there, or whatever you want to call them, that kind of clamp it into the inside of the piston. Now, one thing you're going to need to do before you put the caliper and the new brake pads and the new rotor into place is you're going to have to push the caliper piston back in to the caliper because when you have brand new pads, obviously they're thicker than the ones that were in there before, so they're not gonna fit if you try to put the caliper back on. What I do is I grab a clamp like this, a little C-clamp, and a piece of metal stock. Put the piece of metal stock over the face of the piston, and my C-clamp over the top. And then you can just start tightening it down. Once it's snug, you can just start cranking away, and the piston will push its way back into the caliper. That should be good. Loosen it up. Also, you want to make sure your caliper doesn't 
go falling off in behind the rotor here. Obviously, you don't want it to hang by the brake line. So you can take it and set it down below on the lower control arm and it'll just hang out down there. Or you can use a piece of wire or something to tie it up to a spring coil or something like that. Next thing we gotta do is get the caliper carrier off the back of the hub. And it's a couple 16 millimeter bolts, one down here and then one up here on the top. We just have to remove those guys. Okay, we have the carrier out, pretty simple. Just a couple of these bolts. These things are incredibly nasty looking. Someday I'll upgrade the calipers on this car to something a little bit nicer, something that doesn't corrode like these things do. They'll still work plenty fine, but they just kind of look ugly. So far, so good. So next thing we want to do is get the rotor off. So grab the little six millimeter hex wrench. There's one little bolt holding it in place. Once your bolt is out, it's just a matter of sliding the rotor off. And there's our stock rotor blank. All right, now that everything is apart, I'm gonna clean everything up, get all of the old anti-squeal, anti-squeak off of all of these nuts and bolts where I had it before. You can see it's kind of gunked up on there. Clean off the face of the hub. Now is also probably a good time to check your hub, give it some spins, listen for any sandy or crackly grinding noises just to make sure your bearing isn't shot. If you do hear some nastiness when spinning the hub, you probably want to replace it. <laughs> All right, it's time to grab our new StopTech rotor. They do go on a specific side, so you want to make sure you put them on the proper side. This one has an R on it, meaning right side. The way that the grooves or the slots go in the rotor is that they're aimed forward. We'll make sure we line up our hole, grab our little bolts. Make sure that bolt is nice and snug. It's a very low torque setting, so we just kind of got to get it hand tight. Don't go crazy with it. And these rotors, they come ready to run. You don't need to clean them off or anything like that like I did with my AP racing rotors. So nothing that you need to do for prep, just slap them on there and they're good to go. Now we start reinstalling the parts in the reverse order. The carrier goes on just as it came off. Now the carrier bolts do get tightened down to 81 pound-feet of torque. So grab your torque wrench Crank those suckers down. So next up I'm going to grab some of my brake disc quiet. I'm going to lube up the contact points where the brake pads touch the caliper. Grab my outer brake pad, the new Hawk DTC 60. It just slides into place like so. Grab your one with the little flex pieces on it or whatever you want to call those guys. <laughs> Grab your caliper and slide this one into the caliper. Lock it into place. Just like that. Then we can go ahead and slide the caliper. Hopefully we've got enough room when we push the caliper piston back. We did. Slide it over like that. Grab your long mounting bolts for the caliper, which I got dirty. Get these guys tightened down. And these are also kind of like hand tight, at least that's what I do with them. I didn't bother to look up the torque spec because they kind of go until the bolt stops the way that the bolt is designed. So there's no real torquing of it, or there probably is, and I'm just being lazy. 
or one more thing is getting your little retaining clip back into place. This can be a little bit of a pain, but you kind of line up the outside arms first. One on top, one on the bottom, and you can kind of squeeze it into the center holes. And actually, that one went <laughs> super easy, so I got kind of lucky. But uh, that does it. Now we've got StopTech rotors on there, the Hawk DTC 60 pads. Now we do need to go and bleed the brakes. I haven't done the rears on the car yet, but they are pretty much identical to doing the brakes on the front, almost the exact same process. You do have the e-brake on the back, but it's not a huge deal. Also, don't forget to take your brake line and make sure you reattach it to the mounts point on the shock. There's a the little rubber grommet in the back here that keeps it in place. All right, everybody, the front brakes are on. New StopTech rotors, new Hawk DTC 60 pads. I'm gonna do the rear ones offline here, but let's check out the front brakes. And time for rapid fire rear brake disassembly. We took out the retaining clip on the front of the caliper. Now we're working on the caliper guide pins. Those are coming out the backside, two of them, just like in the front. Dropping our caliper out, removing the brake pads, set the caliper down on the block. Next up is removing the carrier. Two bolts, just like in the front, comes right out. Taking out the single six millimeter bolt on the front, cleaning up our drum brake. Cleaning up the caliper, slapping on our new rotor, torquing that guy down to 12 pound feet. Putting the carrier bolts in the back. These ones are different than the front. 48 pound feet of torque for those rear carrier bolts. Lubricating the brake pad contact points. Don't get any on the brake pads themselves. Now we're getting ready to put our caliper back together. Brake pad is being pressed into the piston itself. Caliper is on. I'm actually putting the brake pad sensor into that pad. The caliper guide pins are going back in. Again, we torque those down to 22 pound feet of torque. Reinsert the clip to the front and you have the finished product. The rear brakes are done on the car. All right, everybody, we're gonna wrap this one up. Didn't go too in depth on flushing and bleeding the brake system. We'll get to that in the future, a more detailed how-to on how to do that process. But we did get the StopTech rotors installed along with the Hawk DTC 60 brake pads on my E36 BMW. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. If you have any thoughts or comments, as always, leave them down below. We would love to hear from you, and I will talk to you all next time.